I made this looping animation right here to test out a few new techniques and create something that I actually liked after finishing it. I've always struggled with that feeling of being proud of what I've made, but I think what I've learned along the way of making this project and what I'm about to share with you can really help change that. Now, what I didn't anticipate is there's only really three real elements that you need to focus on to do this in your own projects. So let me show you what they are. I'm sure like me, you just want to get on with making a project that you've had an idea for straight away without any real planning or design phase. Because after all, After Effects is the part that we enjoy the most. However, without any planning or design stage in this project, it probably would have turned out something like this and ended up in the pile of unfinished projects sat on my computer. But this first step of thinking about the design and direction of my project is what I've been spending the most time on lately. And this has really helped to propel my projects into something that I'm actually happy with and proud to share. Creating mood boards, spiraling ideas, and actually drawing out style frames has become a huge focus before actually opening any software. It sounds so simple to say, but you really wouldn't skip this process with client work. So why would you skip it with your own personal projects that really showcase your ability and your talent? Now, although planning is an important element, there's also some things that I definitely apply during the animation stage that really help to bring my project to life. First of all, this is the style frame that I had in After Effects before we add any form of depth or third dimension to it. And you can see it's okay but it's pretty boring and definitely feels like something is lacking. So I wanted to introduce some extra depth to the main shapes and the overall composition. And there was a few ways that I went about this. First, I focused on getting the frames animating down the Z depth towards the camera. I did do this manually by switching on the 3D layers here and then repositioning my layers in different Z depths. So they were quite far apart so that when everything moved, it would feel way more dynamic. I also did set this up using a lot of pre-comps because that gave me the flexibility to swap out elements inside of them or duplicate them or even swap out the complete pre-comp. Just by doing that, it allowed me to change the look and feel of the composition very easily. Doing this then left me with one animated section that I could then duplicate up and offset in the Z position using a null that was the parent controller for all of these layers. This then allowed me to create a smooth loop over a four second time frame. I also wanted the feel of 3D objects working in this scene to have that extra element of depth. And there was two ways that I went about this. First was using four 3D shape layers. So my keyframe comp here can be broken down very simply into just a couple different shape layers. So first of all, I'm gonna solo this base layer and you'll see it's just a circle with a mask over the top. And all this mask is doing is rounding that bottom edge out for me to give it the appearance of it being a 3D object. I then have another base layer on top and this time it's just a semicircle. And I've done that by creating a circle and then putting a square mask on top. What really gives the illusion of 3D is when I add this top layer. But all this top layer is, is simply a circle that I've squashed down to give it the appearance of it being more of a 3D object when these other two are turned on. Now, all of these are just linked to one null controller, and that's controlling the rotation of the object overall. Nothing's actually spinning, as this is only working in one axis and one dimension. So there's no real 3D happening here. The illusion comes from this top layer, and all that's happening is on this top keyframe, I'm simply reducing the size of the Y parameter on the circle to give it the illusion of it being hidden behind the back. The other element of 3D was to actually use 3D objects in some of these pre-comps and also on the mouse cursor itself to give it that extra bit of dynamicism. Dan dynamicism. Is that a great word? I don't know if I'm pronouncing that or if that's even a word, but make it more dynamic. So I built all of these 3D objects the exact same way, and that's using the advanced 3D renderer in After Effects. So to make 3D objects within our scenes, you'll simply want to select your shape layer and turn on the 3D layer switch. You then need to make sure that we're using the advanced 3D renderer under this drop down over here. And if you now open up your properties and go to geometry options, you'll see this extrusion depth. If you press R on your keyboard to bring up your rotations, you can then rotate this round and you'll see you have a fully 3D object. Now the extrusion depth simply defines 
how extruded that object is in the Z depth. So you can make it way thicker or way thinner than the default values. Now, the other problem with using this renderer is we can't use things like motion blur and layer styles in this pre-comp. If I was to right click this layer, go to layer styles and gradient overlay, nothing would actually change. But there's a little workaround that I used and I'll show you how to do it. So what you'll need to do is go into your contents here and select your group within your shape layer. So then once to go to add front and color and then reselect your group, go to add side and color and then add back and color. And we want to create a color for each side of this object. So I'm going to do red, blue and green. And we want to make these as bright as possible. Then with control shift and C, you'll want to pre-comp this object. We then need to duplicate it three times. And of course, we'll name them front, side, and back. Now I need to treat these as one individual side. So I'm gonna select my front layer and solo that, and then add the key light effect. And then gonna choose my screen color and make it the blue. Then I'm just gonna go inside this comp and rotate this round so I can see the back face as well and go back up one. And I'm gonna duplicate this key light effect and this time select the green. And then I'll go back to my 3D cursor and set that back to zero just so we have the top face. So now I can simply right click this, go to layer styles and gradient overlay, and everything will work as it should. Now you might notice you get a little bit of spill on the edges of these of the keying, and you just simply need to increase your screen gain to get rid of any extra shadows or curves. And you'll need to do this to each individual layer so that you can then have your normal effects and layer styles as you would. Now to add even more depth to the shot, I manually keyframed the mouse cursor pre-comp and brought it towards the camera. And then I animated the focus distance and depth of field properties on the camera so that it felt like it was shifting focus. It's only a quick motion, but I think it really helps to make the hero object and overall shot feel way more interesting. Although everything looks and feels so much better with this extra 3D and depth going on in the project, it wouldn't be complete without some design styles and extra flair. And that's where my next step and probably favorite part of the process really comes in to bring it all together. And that's exactly how I took the shot from looking like this, to something like this. Then changed it to this and fixed all the glitches in the middle. Now pretty much all of my project is built using two or three layer styles. And you can see I've got this cube pre-comp in this window here. And that's exactly how I showed you to set up the 3D object. So if I go into this, you'll see I have a cube that's doing its rotation in here. And then above this, I have the cube that's got all the effects on. And the effects I've actually used are just some simple layer styles. And to add layer styles, we can right click this layer and go to layer styles. and We can choose the ones from here. If I open up my existing layer styles on this one. I've simply got a gradient overlay working over the top. And that's probably my number one go to layer style. We can simply open that up and go to edit gradient and then choose the colors that we want to use. Now on some of the other objects here, so let's take a look at this main back path here. If I open up my layer styles, I've also added an inner glow to this. And that's just adding this little inner sheen here that just looks like a bit of light around the edges. And throughout the whole project, I'm pretty much just using those two layer styles to build this scene. You can see that this then extends to the background as well. So rather than a layer style this time, however, I've actually just done a gradient fill from two colors from my color palette and then added that onto my background. Now, a few other little extras I've added to this are these particles here, which is simply a CC starburst that's animating its phase with an expression. And that's simply time times 90. And that means these particles are just gonna move forward at a similar speed like our camera is moving or appears to be moving down all of these windows. I've then added an extra light to the background here. So I'm just going to turn off my 3D scene. We've got this kind of horizon gradient just to add a bit more light to the scene and a bit more interest. And that's simply a circle shape layer with a fast box blur on top in a different color. And that just gives us a bit more interest down at the bottom here. I've then added a glow layer with a new adjustment layer. I turn that on, you'll see that really brings everything to life. Uh, it's just two glows with different thresholds and different radiuses and intensities to kind of accentuate that glow and make it look a bit more interesting. I've then got this QCA layer, which is simply a quick chromatic aberration, which is a free plugin you can download. And that's going to split out our RGB values just to add a bit of interest. If I set this position to two, you'll really see that come to life. So you can see that edging there 
of all these layers being split. Now, a little tip that I learned here from Austin Bounds, and this was a really cool idea. So overall, this scene looks nice, but there wasn't much contrast in it, and I really like these colors. So he suggested adding a simple saturation and curves layer. So doing just that really added that extra little bit of flair to my project. I've simply added a hue and saturation layer and pumped that up a little bit and dropped the highlights a touch and then added this extra curves layer to bring in more contrast as well. Now, when my project looked like this, I did feel like something was missing. So I went in and added this grid layer. And this is just a 3D layer that I've rotated with a grid on and then added a transform. Now the reptile effect here is simply duplicating my grid. So if I turn that off, I only have one grid. With the reptile effect and this grid effect, it allows me to expand this grid as much as I like. And this is actually on a mat at the minute. So if I turn that mat off, you'll see this goes infinitely, but then suddenly stops. So what I did was add a fall off mat to this, which is simply a gradient. And then that allows it to have this kind of fade and fall off so it's not a sudden stop. Now to animate the grid, I didn't actually use the position itself. I simply added a transform effect and this allowed it to work up the Y and just animate as I wanted to without affecting how it was rotated in 3D. And it meant it could just transform infinitely because this reptile effect is underneath it. By applying all of these steps and taking the extra care and time to think about how you really use them in your own projects, you'll see how quickly and how useful it can be to really transform your own projects. However, there's a few other techniques that I've not really mentioned in this video that can really speed up your workflow. So if you wanna check those out, you can go ahead and watch this video next.